CT asked in a comment on one of my videos, when will there be a cure for multiple sclerosis? And I explained that it's difficult to answer and I'll have to expound in video form. So is there a cure for multiple sclerosis currently? Will there be a cure for multiple sclerosis? When will there be a cure? So I have to explain two caveats, two nuances of the word cure, and then I'll speculate about our current state of multiple sclerosis cures and the future of multiple sclerosis research and potential cures. So it depends what you mean by cure. Do you mean that it cures every single person with multiple sclerosis? Because if not, maybe there's a cure for MS right now for some people. There are many people who receive standard, readily available FDA EMA approved treatments who are stable for many years. There are people who were in the original beta seron trials in 1991 and they're stable 40 years later. But of course, you wouldn't consider that to be a cure if you required ongoing treatment. Perhaps the same is true for lifestyle interventions. However, there are induction therapies, things like cladribine, lemtrada, hematopoietic stem cell transplant. There are definitely people who receive these treatments, maybe improve, and then are stable and in remission for years or even indefinitely. The problem is it's not every single person. There are people who receive these treatments and get worse afterwards. For example, I've seen people receive hematopoietic stem cell transplant and do very well and be stable for many years, but I've seen others who had significant progression after the treatment. So it's definitely not 100%. The other nuance is what exactly do you mean by cure? So if you're a young person with relapsing multiple sclerosis with relatively low disability, you may just want to stop the inflammation of multiple sclerosis. If you have minimal problems and you can stop relapses and new MRI lesions and disability progression, perhaps, again, readily available standard treatments may be kind of like a cure for you. Maybe Lemtrada or hematopoietic stem cell transplant or cladribine, or even chemotherapy for an unrelated cancer, such as treatments of breast cancer that have led to long-term remissions in multiple sclerosis, could incidentally cause a cure of multiple sclerosis for you. Now, uh, again, it depends on your situation. What if you have progressive MS and you're slowly progressing and you may be able to stop the relapses and the new MRI lesions, but you would need something else to prevent slow insidious decline that it could occur with progressive MS, which may only partly be due to inflammation and may in part be due to other phenomena such as mitochondrial failure or other things on the level of the individual cell. Also, what if you have long-standing multiple sclerosis and you have already acquired significant disability? You don't want to just stop MS. You want to reverse existing disability. Now, again, this is not impossible. This happens all the time. People with multiple sclerosis improve, even sometimes people who have long-standing disability. To give some examples, I'll talk about the TOP study, the TISABRI observational program, which followed people on TISABRI for 10 years. And after 10 years, about 34% of people, or 34% or a third of people, improved significantly. Now, I'm going to refer to a disability scale in multiple sclerosis, the EDSS scale, or the expanded disability status scale. And I have a separate video on this if you want to take a look. But basically, zero is no disability due to MS. Three to four would be considered moderate disability. Six means you require a cane to walk 100 meters. And 10 is death due to multiple sclerosis. And basically, 34% or about a third of people in this observational study for Tysabri improved by at least two on the EDSS scale, which is very significant. But again, it's only a third. And of course, some of those people could have improved and gotten worse later and ended up in the same spot. And so it's not all that impressive. Now, in terms of individual case reports, there are many reports of spectacular improvements. For example, there was a case report of someone who had very aggressive relapsing multiple sclerosis, took Lemtrada, did not get better, had many gadolinium-enhancing lesions, and had an EDSS of 7.5, meaning they were in a wheelchair, and they received hematopoietic stem cell transplant with beam plus antithymocyte globulin, and improved dramatically and afterwards had an EDSS of two, meaning minimal disability, probably no visible disability. Now that's a spectacular improvement that definitely occurs in some people, but unfortunately not everyone. Uh, even people with progressive multiple sclerosis can sometimes dramatically improve. There was an excellent study by Dr. Saud Sadiq, 
of the Tisch MS Center, and he did a study on intrathecal mesenchymal stem cells trying to regrow nerve tissue in progressive multiple sclerosis, and he did it on 20 patients and followed them for years. I have a separate video on this study, and one of them had a dramatic improvement. They went from an EDSS of 5.5, meaning they could walk no more than 200 meters, all the way down to 2, again, minimal disability. That's a spectacular improvement, unusual in long-standing progressive MS, but it was just one out of 20 people. Some other people had more modest improvements. If he could do it in 20 out of 20, perhaps he'd win the Nobel Prize, but one out of 20, maybe that one person was a hyper responder and just got lucky. It's hard to say. So you can see the concept of cure is a little bit more dubious than you might think. So depending on how you classify it, maybe we have a cure for MS right now, if you're talking about a cure for all people that not only stops the disease and 100% reverses all prior disability, unfortunately, we're not there right now. But what about the future? Well, I think there's a tremendous potential for improvement in multiple sclerosis therapeutics. Uh, one thing that I think we'll see relatively soon is an improvement in the anti-inflammatory therapy. Now, this may be a bit frustrating to you because our anti-inflammatory therapy is already relatively good. We're pretty good at stopping relapses and new MRI lesions. But the problem is our drugs have risk. And right now, there's sort of a trade-off. Do you want to take a drug such as glutirum or acetate that is extremely safe but not very effective for many people with MS? Or do you want to take something such as Lemtrada, Ocrevus, Rituximab, Tysabri, Cladribine that has some degree of significant risk? And even though we think the risk can be controlled if we select the right people to get the therapy and people are comfortable with the risk, it's still there and we will have rare bad outcomes. That's just the reality. But I think in the next probably even within five to seven years, we'll have something that's significantly better in the sense that it's very safe, it's more targeted, it's a designer drug, it's not taking out large chunks of the immune system, yet is highly effective. Now, it could be something like a Gruden's tyrosine kinase, kinase inhibitor like mesitinib, and I have a video on that if you want to take a look, or it could be something else, I'm not exactly sure, but I definitely think we'll see something and something relatively soon. But what about reversing long-standing disability? Well, right now, there's a lot of potential in the field of remyelination. And I think clomastine is something that has potential, and I have a video on that. And there are a lot of different potential agents. And I think one of them will probably get FDA EMA approved relatively soon. Again, probably within five to seven years. Now, I can't predict which one, and a lot of them will definitely fail. And if you follow the research, I can tell you right now, it's going to be very frustrating because some of these just won't pan out, such as anti-lingo, which turns out to be ineffective, even though it seemed to have a lot of hope. That's just the reality. A lot of these treatments don't pan out, but it's sort of a shotgun approach. Many will fail, but a few will succeed, and I definitely think we'll have something that's available and approved and proven. But here's the bad news. The first available treatments as remyelinating agents, they may not be all that effective. They may have a modest benefit that would help some people recover some function, and it may be sort of a stepwise progression in improvement in remyelinating therapy rather than a true breakthrough drug. Unfortunately, I think that's the more likely scenario that the early remyelinating therapies may not be all that great, but definitely are a step in the right direction. Now, of course, remyelination isn't going to make everyone with MS all the way better because people can have permanent neuron and axon loss in multiple sclerosis. So if you have preserved nerve fibers and the myelin is abnormal, you have a much greater chance for improvement. And in general, I think with multiple sclerosis, we have a much greater chance for significant regeneration than other diseases such as strokes where the tissue is infarcted and gone or Lou Gehrig's disease where the motor neurons are dying and nowhere to be found. I think there's more potential for regeneration in multiple sclerosis and we'll likely see major regenerative therapies sooner than in some of these other diseases, but it still may be slow and stepwise. And again, there is definitely some degree of permanent neuron and axon injury that can occur in multiple sclerosis. So for that, I'm not really sure we'll see anything significant in the next five to seven years. Now, if you ask me long term, like 20, 30, 40 years, then yes, I'm very optimistic 
that we'll see something significant even to treat permanent axon loss, something that will regenerate loss in neurons and axons, but it's probably a little bit far away. And it's hard to me, for me to be 100% confident uh, about when and how it will occur because it would probably take a series of steps to get to that point. We're a little bit too far away. We can conceive it, but we can't quite see it. But anyways, those are my thoughts. Overall, I think the future is optimistic. Even I think the current situation is pretty optimistic for many people with MS, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think there is a cure for multiple sclerosis? If so, what is it and what are your experiences? Do you think we'll see a cure soon or do you think we'll see a cure later? Or do you think we'll see a cure only for some people? And do you have any suggestions for future videos?